I'd like to welcome you all to the only socialist book launch in the world that takes place in a nightclub. Uh, it's great to see so many people here. This year's volume uh, of the Socialist Register, A World Turned Upside Down, uh, the title was something that uh, Colin Lees and I, and Colin is here, he's back in Toronto, he has the concluding essay in this year's volume, uh, argued about uh, when he was my co-editor on the Register over 10 years ago. Um, I, I thought it was a snappy title to get at the question of whether uh, the quote-unquote Global South uh, was displacing the W, capital W West uh, as the center of capital accumulation in the world. And Colin thought that was a lousy title uh, because it was the title of a famous book by Christopher Hill uh, that wasn't anything about that, of course. It was about the uh, radical movements uh, of the 17th century, the diggers and the levelers, uh, in struggle against a emerging English capitalism. Uh, anyway, once Colin left, I kept at it, and Greg finally agreed that we could call a volume called A World Turned Upside Down, uh, provided we added a question mark. Uh, and it is partly about uh, the question of whether there is a shift in the center of global capitalism. Um, but it's much more than that now, obviously with the rise of uh, the far right, uh, the xenophobic nationalist response to the uh, vulnerabilities and crisis that capitalism has thrown up in the face of a weak working class and a disheartened socialist left. Um, the question of a world turned upside down is now a question of whether uh, glo global capitalism uh, is being undone by a resurgence of a version of nationalist fascism. Um, and that's some of the themes that we pick up. Uh, but we don't only pick up that. Uh, we also are trying to examine the extent to which uh, there are left alternatives that would turn this world upside down. And the concluding essays in the volume in particular address that question. Uh, so this panel uh, reflects, I think, the general tenor. Uh, Sam is going to speak to his and my opening essay, which is called Trumping the Empire. Um, and uh, Nicole Ashhoff, who's here from Boston, uh, has just joined the Registered Collective as a member of the editorial board is written before in the Register. Um, we'll be speaking to her essay, uh, which examines the Trump era, but in the context of what openings for the left, what life for the left um, can we see there. And finally, Colin will address his essay, which is called Post-Brexit Britain, Is There a Way Forward for the Left? Which looks at the prospects and limitations of uh, the Corbyn's team's takeover of the Labour Party and uh, its revival of a democratic socialist project there. Um, I just want to say before I pass it over to Greg, uh, who will talk more about the content of the volume, uh, that in a sense the opening essays are a Toronto volume in a way, apart from Greg and myself, one of the most important essays in the volume is by Adam Hanya. Um, who many of you will know from having been a PhD student at York University. His essay called The Contradictions of Global Migration uh, is worth the price of admission for this book by itself. Uh, it's just phenomenal. Uh, Ajaz Ahmad has the second essay in the volume called Extreme Capitalism and the National Question. And Ajaz, of course, taught here for many years. And the final essay, the fourth essay rather, by Elmar Altvater uh, and his partner Brigitte Mankov on the capital of scene, permanent capitalist counter-revolution. Elmar, who tragically passed away this year, this was the last essay he ever wrote, um, uh, also taught in the York Political Economy Summer School. Uh, so this is a volume which uh, is rightly being launched here in Toronto. I want to thank uh, obviously our 
independent socialist publishers, Fernwood Books and the distributor Brunswick Books. Uh, without them, this isn't possible. Um, it is impossible without Merlin Press in London, above all. Uh, and I also want to thank Frederick Peters, Tanner Merlis, Steve Marr, Ellen Zugi, our assistant editors, Panch um, uh for putting this evening together. Um, we owe them a lot of thanks for making this all happen. Greg. Thanks, Bill. Um, I just want to note that uh, besides the putting together this uh, a new register, uh, we also launched with uh, Alan Zugi, our uh, associate editor, a new, a new series with Haymarket Press on uh, on Socialist Registered Classics, with the first one being Class Party and Revolution, uh, that, that was released uh, late last year. Um, and we're working on putting together another volume on the, the debates about automation and technology, which will come up uh, next uh, this year. Um, so that was also something that we undertook that I kind of wanted to make sure that we signaled as, uh, some of the developments we've been doing. I think, as Leo mentioned, uh, this volume I think of in, as a bit of a, a link to the uh, to the first volume I started on with Leo on the, the crisis. Uh, this time, uh, uh, you know, examining the crisis of the 2008 financial crisis a decade ago, and it kind of picks up a theme from that crisis of how we think of the world order being restructured and world, the world market at this point in time, a, a decade on. It also picks up a, a running thing that we had from that first volume, and then we did a, a volume in, in uh, 2016 on the politics of the right, and that was that the, the crisis could lead to a hardening of the right and uh, a development of a new kind of xenophobic politics as a result of the crisis as much as it could lead to an opening for the left. Uh, and a lot of what this volume explores is, is still that contradiction. Uh, uh, the way that we kind of conceived it more specifically uh, initially and maintained that through the final, uh, final uh, set of essays was to think about this as the trump G conjuncture, uh, this new uh, 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 set of social uh, leaders and social forces on the world order and what it was meaning for the possibilities of deglobalization or re-globalization in a new form or new form, new rivalries, uh, as well as both of them seem to capture the, the, the issue of new forms of right-wing populism and authoritarian uh, governance structures. Uh, we, gave, we held a, a, a workshop in London about a year and a half ago uh, where we took up uh, 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 the initial group of essays, debated them out, and we gave uh, the group uh, the group of writers the following kind of mandate, which we laid out in this year's preface, which I'll just read for a minute. There was already considerable disorientation abroad in the face of Brexit's aggravation of the ongoing crisis of the European Union, wherein anti-globalist right-wing political movements and policy advisors openly proclaimed their attraction to the authoritarian bravado of Vladimir Putin's strong state. But even this now has given way to palpable confusion regarding what sense to make of this world in a political conjuncture marked by Donald Trump's Make America Great Again presidency of the United States on the one hand, and on the other, Xi Jinping's ambitious, ambitious agenda in consolidating his position as core leader at the top of the Chinese state. Trump's explicit disdain for the modes of leadership the U.S. exhibited in the making of global capitalism since the Second World War, including providing the scaffolding for the institutions underpinning integrated global production and trade, financial flows, development support, uh, international regulatory coordination, and geomilitary alliances, is daily on full display. Such is today's topsy-turvy world that is Xi who has offered himself up as the defender of globalization and world capitalism in the face of Trump's trade protectionism and broader distancing from heretofore, heretofore US-led global institutions. That is what we hoped and I think uh, the essays uh, uh, took up. Uh, I think uh, it's a remarkably interesting survey of this current period and I think still unique in, in anybody attempting to s take a global survey of the Trump-G conjuncture. 
Um, there's a number of uh, clusters of essays that are in the volume uh, on Trumpist politics and world order. Uh, Leo and Sam Gindin on Trump in the Empire. Uh, Ray Kiley looking at globalism and uh, neoliberalism's forms, particularly focused on the way this, this has been structured in the US. Doug Henwood's uh, look at Trump and the new billionaire class. Uh, a set of essays looking at neoliberalism neoliberalism's authoritarian practices in this moment. Uh, Alfredo Sadfilo and Ben Fine and Marco Boff, Bar Marco Boffo in particular, uh, surveying the new practices that have occurred with neoliberal uh, globalization since the crisis. Uh, Ajaz Ahmad has a remarkable survey of, of uh, global capitalism almost since the war, in particular uh, the right in that moment, uh, in that history. Uh, uh, looking at extreme capitalism and the national question. Uh, Adam Ania on global migrations. Umet Oso on uh, uh, humanitarian intervention. I think one of the things that really sets the, the volume apart is a cluster of essays, a really remarkable uh, set on, on China, uh, looking at the China's position in the realignment of global politics. Uh, that's Lin Chun on the new globalization and, and uh, the disappearance of, of, of Chinese uh, historical foreign policy for the new agenda of Xi Jinping. Sean Starr is looking at uh, China's relative dependence on foreign direct investment, and particularly its relative dependence still and contradictory dependence on the U.S. Uh, Jahati Ghosh uh, has a remarkable essay surveying Asian capitalism and where the Belt and Road Initiative fits in and addressing the question of whether there's been a decoupling or not from globalization. Uh, Anna Garcia and Patrick Bond look at the turmoil that's uh, besetting the BRICS. Uh, so, uh, a remarkable, I think they're just a, a really great essay. I'm teaching them this year already. Uh, they're <laughs> generating a lot of discussion from the, from the, in the class. Uh, finally, there's a set of uh, essays looking at uh, the question of alternatives or uh, trying to just understand this uh, moment for openings for the left. David White has a, a very interesting essay, particularly linked to the, the, uh, the developments in Britain related to the uh, Corbyn leadership uh, with the provocative title, Death to the Corporation. We only wish, but uh, he's laid down an agenda for that. Uh, Alan Cafruni on the UA EU and the left. Colin will speak in a minute on, on Corbyn and the left, and Nicole Ashkoff on Trumpism of the left, which she'll speak to shortly. Um, so I think this is a, a really terrific uh, set of, of essays uh, looking at the particular neoliberal globalization and its particular forms of uncoupling, uh, decoupling, uh, deglobalization, uh, the way reglobalization is attempting to uh, uh, occur. Uh, the refinancialization that is, has evolved, and at, looking at those contradictions in that context. Um, there is one other essay I'd like to uh, single out, uh, uh, and that is uh, from Elmar Altwater and Brigitte Monkoff. Uh, this year we lost, uh, over the last year we lost a lot of the great founders uh, of eco-socialism, passed away. Uh, James O'Connor, uh, Joel Cobell, and Elmar Alfeder, and uh, more recently in Toronto, an, a, an activist that many of us knew quite well, Dave Vasey, was very active in the anti-tar sands and uh, pipeline struggle. Uh, Elmar was, of course, uh, a, a great, one of the great German Marxist theorists of the last couple of decades. Uh, it was part of our editor, a friend, comrade, one of the leaders of Attack Europe. Uh, and we were very fortunate to have the last essay published uh, with his partner, Brigitte Monkov. They take on, in this essay, uh, one of the great themes of Elmar's writing over the last two decades, but in fact goes back to the initial work he did as a doctoral student in the 1960s uh, on the capitalist, not on the, this topic, but on ecology, uh, on the capitalist scene as, as permanent capitalist counter-revolution, uh, dealing particularly with climate change and the ecological crisis. Uh, and particularly the way that the IPCC uh, and a range of uh, figures on both the right but even on the left are proposing uh, geo various forms of incredible geo engineering projects to deal with it. Elmar and Berg conclude their essay with the following. These geoengineering measures do not address the mode of production and consumption. They avoid even minor system, systemic changes that would address the root causes of the problem. The world is upside down, 
because the nature and the majority of people are oppressed. Uh, we miss Elmar greatly and wish he was here. Let me say one more word I thought I meant to. I guess many of you have noticed this remarkable cover illustration. We've had the great fortune for the last... Can you get the mic? Sorry, we've had the great fortune for the last 25 years of having a tremendous designer, Louis Mackay, uh, do our covers. And uh, Lewis, inspired by uh, the title, The World Turned Upside Down, which Christopher Hill, for his book on the Diggers and Leviters, uh, resuscitated from a ballad of the mid 17th century, a ballad that was first uh, actually published in 1745 called The World Turned Upside Down. And it was uh, often uh, reproduced at, on woodcuts, uh, which were designed to show the uh, tough world of early capitalism. Well, inspired by those woodcuts, which uh, 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 represented that upside down world as people saw it at that time, uh, Lewis reproduced a version of those woodcuts. And on the inside front cover, uh, he explains what he did, and it's really wonderful. He says, what surely added power and currency to the trope was the woodcut illustration, even though it was crudely executed. It belongs to tradition of visual satire and world wordplay, but its bizarre juxtaposition also foreshadows surrealism. Everything appears a rebour, in an inversion of the natural order, or at least the familiar order, sometimes providing a rebus for a well-known idiom, cart before horse, fish out of water, that's why the fish are there, in case you're wondering, uh, sharing the sky with an inverted church, in this case, the inverted city of London, uh, or the inverted Frankfurt uh, Bank, uh, uh, Central Bank of Europe. Um, uh, clothes worn the wrong way up, a mouse chasing a cat, rabbit chasing a ferret, a, a barrel wheeling a man. Several generations later, in the following century, the same title was reused over a new ballad, a popular chapbook together with a whole set of woodcut illustrations of a similar topsy-turvy flavor. Again, there were fish out of water, uh, perching in trees, diving on seabirds, angling for humans, while a savage lamb leaps onto a lion. And he reproduces here some of these old woodcuts. And he concludes by saying, to reflect on our own distracted times, the present volume's covers illustration Attempt aims to maintain the spirit, although not exactly the style, of these popular illustrations. 